Hello, it's story time with Terry Jo. This is a Dr. Seuss book called, Did I Ever Tell You How Lucky You Are? Super excited to share this. It's a little bit long, so I hope you have your glass of water preferred. If you're a grown up, maybe you have a cup of coffee, but let's listen and enjoy this story time, okay? Hmm. He sat in a terribly prickly place, but he sang with a sunny, sweet smile on his face. When you think things are bad, when you feel sour and blue, when you, get st when you start to get mad, you should do what I do. Just tell yourself, ducky, you're really quite lucky. Some people are much more, oh, ever so much more, oh, muchly, much, much more unlucky than you. Be glad you don't work on the bungle bung, <laughs> it's gonna be hard to read some of these, bungle bung bridge that they're building across Boober Bay at Bum Ridge. It's a troublesome world. All the people who are in it are troubled with troubles almost every minute. You ought to be thankful a whole heaping lot for the places and people. You're lucky you're not. And let's send light to all those people everywhere that are in worse situations. Please, light, 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 rainbows of loving light. I get chills. Just suppose, for example, you lived in Gazate and got caught in that traffic on Zate Highway 8. It's not happening much around here anymore, is it? Or anywhere in the world. Or suppose just for instance, you lived in Gazare with your bedroom up here and your bathroom up there. Look at the difference you see. Uh oh, sorry, my screen just split. You can see one of the rooms is here and one of them is over here. Woo, imagine that, that wouldn't be fun. Suppose, just suppose you were poor Herbie Hart who has taken his thrombimbulator apart. He never will get it together, I'm sure. He never will know if Gick or the gore fits into the scrux or the nuts or the snore. Yes, Ducky, you're lucky. You're not Herbie Hart, who has taken his thrombimbulator apart. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff in there. Oh, crazy Dr. Seuss, what a genius, huh? Think they work you too hard? Think of poor Ali Sard. He has to mow grass in his uncle's backyard and it's quick growing grass and it grows as he mows it. The faster he mows it, the faster he grows it. And all that this, all that his stingy old uncle will pay for his shoving that mower around in that hay is the piffless pay of two duplas a day. And Ali can't live on such piffless pay. So, he has to paint flagpoles on Sundays in Bruce. How lucky are you? You don't live in his shoes. Yikes. You want to see him painting that flagpole at the top? I want that job. And poor Mr. Bix. Every morning at six, poor Mr. Bix has his birth in to fix. It doesn't seem fair. It just doesn't seem right. But his birth in, sorry, borfin, his borfin just seems to go slump every night. It slumps in a heap, sadly needing repair. Bix figures it's due to the local night air. It takes him all day to unschlump it and then the night air comes back and it slumps once again. So don't you feel blue? Don't get down in the dumps. You're lucky you don't you don't have a borf a borfin that slumps. And while we are at it, consider the schlocks, the crumple horn, web footed, green bearded schlocks whose tail is entailed with unsolvable knots. If he isn't muchly, much worse off than you, 
I'll eat my umbrella. That's just what I'll do. Sorry, I got to show you the knots without my fingers in them. <laughs> I'll just hold it up here. Knotted tail. And you're lucky indeed you don't ride on a camel. To ride on a camel, you sit on a whammel. A whammel, you know, is a sort of saddle held on by a button that's known as a faddle. And boy, if your old whammel, faddle, cattle, whammel, faddle gets loose, I'm telling you, ducky, you're gone like a goose. Comment if you're here, I'd love to say hi. And poor Mr. Potter, T crosser, I daughter. He has to cross T's and he has to dot I's in an I and T factory out in Van Nuys. Yeah, poor Mr. Potter, that would be it. <laughs> Just look at him so closely doing all that work. Poor Mr. Potter, I'm glad I'm not him. Oh, the jobs people work at out west near Hotch. Hot Hotch. There's a Hotch Hotch the Watcher. His job is to watch. It, it's to keep both his eyes on the lazy town bee. A bee that is watched will work harder, you see. Well, he watched and he watched, but in spite of his watch, that bee didn't work any harder, not much. So then somebody said, our old bee watching man just isn't bee watching as hard as he can. He ought to be watched by another hotch watch, hotch watcher. The thing that we need is a bee watcher watcher. Well. The bee watcher watcher watched the bee watcher. He didn't watch well, so another hotch hotcher had had to come in as a watch watcher watcher. And today all the hotchers who live in hotch hotch are watching on watch watcher watching watch. Watch watching the watcher who's watching that bee. You're not a hotch watcher. You're lucky, you see. Might be fun to watch a bee though, wouldn't it? And how fortunate you're not Professor De Bries, who has spent the last, the past 32 years, if you please, trying to teach Irish ducks how to read Javanese. And think of the poor puffing Pugelhorn players who have to parade down the Pugelhorn stairs every morning to wake up the Prince of Pubo Puboken. It's awful how often their Pugels get broken. And oh, just suppose you were poor Harry Haddo. Try as he will, he can't make any shadow. He thinks that perhaps something's wrong with his jizz. And I think that by golly, there probably is. Oh, so you can see Harry Haddo doesn't have a shadow. That's him right here. Look at it. Interesting. And the brother's bazoo, the poor brother's bazoo. Suppose your hair grew like theirs happened to do. And you think you're unlucky? I'm telling you, Ducky. Some people are muchly, oh, ever so muchly, much, muchly more, more, more unlucky than you. And suppose that you lived in that forest in France where the average young person just hasn't a chance to escape from the perilous pants eating plants. But your pants are safe. You're a fortunate guy. And you ought to be shouting, how lucky am I? This is one of my favorite pictures. Look at him. The pants eating plants. Look at his pants. So cute. And speaking of plants, you really should be greatly gladdish. You're not Farmer Falkenberg's 17th radish.
And you're so, so lucky you're not Gucky Gown, who lives by himself 90 miles out of town in the ruins of Ronk. Ronk is rather run down. And you're so, so, so lucky you're not a less sock left behind by mistake in the caverns of Croc. You see the sock? It's right there in the corner. Thank goodness for all the things you are not. Thank goodness you're not something someone forgot and left all alone in some punkerish place like a rusty tin coat hanger hanging in space. It's our last page, ready? That's why I say, ducky, don't grumble, don't stew. Some critter critters are much, much, oh, ever so much, much, so muchly, much, much more unlucky than you. What's funny is, I think it's implying that the old white haired, supposedly wise man is sharing this information. But I like to imagine that the child is sharing the information. Because you never know. We all have wisdom, no matter our age. All right, blessings for a great day. That was, did I ever tell you how lucky you are? And just wondering, did I ever tell you how lucky you are? Because you are lucky to be you. The most beautiful blessing you could be is yourself. So let's bless our world by being yourself. Thank you. Bye.